you haven't checked out our other break ace analysis videos, go check those out now. We have lots of GoPro footage with the data overlaid and then also some other ride analysis files. So the analysis that I did last week, I was comparing Strava to Training Peaks to Break Ace and we looked at the pros and cons of each software. So today what I wanted to do was go back and look at my ride from one of my better runs. I was doing some pacing strategy where I was you know, coasting on one run and pedaling on the other and trying to figure out which was actually faster with respect to braking. I also have my power meter on. So this was one of my fastest runs I've ever done there. The trail was called Tayara o Maharangi, and we just call it the Gorge for short because it's actually a lot easier just to say that. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to compare my ride to Caleb Bodger, who has the KOM on this trail. So I ride with Caleb a lot on this trail, and I want to see what he's doing differently to me and why he's able to go faster. So these were on separate days, and that's okay, because the trail pretty much doesn't really change. It's always kind of damp. On both the days that we tested, it was pretty reasonable trail conditions, so it's not going to be a huge factor in our testing analysis. What we do know is that even though Caleb lost his Garmin file for this ride, he did set the timer, and he does know that he went his fastest time ever on this day. So I already have the ride files up, so let's go check them out. So here we have my ride, and this is probably one of the better runs that I've done on this trail. So for me to go 2 minutes and 41 seconds is actually pretty good. And we know that actually, as we looked last time, that Break Ace is able to be a lot more accurate with time than Strava because you're actually selecting the exact analysis range. So one of the major things that I see right away is that my flow score was much lower on this ride than it was on the day that I was riding it in the wet and testing some larger rotors. So my flow score was a 24 last time. Flow score represents how efficient I was at using my brakes across the whole rod. Of course, if we scroll across, we can see all the times where I was braking on the elevation plot. And like we said last time, raw braking data doesn't tell us a ton. So 1300 watts doesn't really mean a lot in and of itself. So that's why we have all of our scores like modulation scores, duration score, and intensity score. So actually it looks like my duration score was really good at 84%, but my modulation score is 60%. So my intensity score could actually use the most work. So when I'm looking at this ride right away, I know what I need to be doing. And that is working on my intensity and working on my modulation. For me, brake health and brake effectiveness are much better today than they were on the other ride. So let's have a look at Caleb's ride and see what happens. Okay, so here's Caleb's ride and his time is already 10 seconds faster than me. So he just leaps and bounds better than me. And we can see right away that his flow score is a lot different. So my flow score is 20, his is 18. If you scroll across, you can notice some differences like his brake power is much higher. And there are some more complicated reasons for that, but it also it reinforces why it's important for us to use our filtering al algorithms to make the data easy to compare between him and I. So this flow score is the first way that we do that. So Caleb was much better than me at modulating. His modulation score is at 75%. His duration score is also better at 89%. But unfortunately for him, his intensity was a little bit worse. It probably has a lot to do with how the trail is. So this isn't a flow trail by any means. You're coming in really hot to every turn and you're braking really hard just to actually get around it. So he could probably work to improve this, and we've talked about it and implemented some changes when he goes back to this trail. Lucky for me, uh, my brake health was better than his, and also my brake effectiveness was slightly better. So, you know, there's a little bit, bit of a win for me. I know one of the things that Caleb does is he uses his rear brake a lot, and I think we'll see that when we go down to the bottom, but that might be one of the reasons why his brake effectiveness isn't as good. So that suggests to me that there's a little bit of room for improvement here. So more on Caleb's ride. If we scroll down, look at the braking stats, we'll see. So yeah, he's he's heavier on the rear brake. So he's at 62%. So more on the rear brake than on the front brake. But 26 seconds of braking time in two and a half minutes. That's actually quite good. You can see also with the temperature modeling that his rear brake is getting warmer. And this is by no means anything crazy as far as brake temperature. So that's actually okay. And here's his braking map. So you can see all the times he brakes. Um, this one, a little, little random one there, just poking his head out. And what we did before we had brake ace, we were spending a lot of time going back to these turns because we, we know that we're braking in between these berms. So we spent a lot of time sessioning them and there wasn't really much we could do. And actually now that we have the brake ace data, like once we started using this on this trail, we just stopped going back to session it because as far as our flow score, it doesn't mean a whole lot breaking in these break events. So let's just go back to my file. Okay, so here's mine. Um, we'll just zoom out, look at this whole trail. It looks like I have that same little random one, 
but mine's a little bit longer, unfortunately. What we know about this part of the trail is we actually went back and did quite a bit of work on this section because there was a tree that had fallen and you couldn't totally see through the section. So we went back and we cut back like a bunch of the bushes so you could actually see and you're not as worried going through it. So actually now when we go back, we don't break at all. So one of the things that we can see in our breaking stats is I actually braked fewer times than Caleb, which is a bit of a surprise. So we know we can't go off of number of braking events to correlate to performance because actually what was happening is all my braking events were probably quite a bit longer. What you can see though is that you can see that I'm braking for 30 seconds whereas he was braking for 26. So that's one of the major differences between us. Interestingly, you can see that I did more of my braking with the front brake, which is actually a huge surprise. I know that I've been spending a lot of time looking at everyone else's data and most people are heavier on the rear brake. And I think I've started to shift the way that I brake, which probably isn't ideal. But for me, this has always been a pretty good strategy and it just has to do with where I grew up learning how to ride. I'm a little bit lighter though, so my brakes aren't getting as hot. So this trail isn't long enough for anything to worry about brake heat, so that's okay. So yeah, you can see here that um, I'm braking in all those same turns. And like I said, we just stopped worrying about those. So what we focus on now is we focus on our key opportunities, which you'll be able to see down here. So here are my key opportunities. And I know in this first key opportunity, this green one where I'm braking for a really long time, that actually I'm able to catch up to him slightly. Like it's the only place on the trail where I'm able to get any time on him. And we're pretty much together until this point but it's after this point that we start to get differences. And let's just have a look at Caleb's key opportunities, see if they're uh, super similar. Okay, so here's Caleb's ride. So one of the things that's really interesting to me is to see that our three key opportunities for improving are pretty much in the same areas. I know that this is a really rooty section right here, and it looks like the differences between us is that Caleb's braking like really hard before the roots and letting off his brakes on top of them. So that's actually a really good and safe strategy, but I do know that I'm able to make up time on him like right here on these routes. But the issue is when we look at our braking, I'm kind of exiting with a lot of speed. So I'm braking like pretty hard and then I'm kind of catching him, but then I'm also braking here where he's already not really worrying about braking anymore. So I need to focus on coming into this with a little bit more control and probably not focus on going over those routes as fast as possible. Otherwise, these last two key opportunities look pretty similar for both of us, which is pretty interesting. He's already made up a lot of time on me by about this section, and then I lose him here. But it's interesting to see that he needs to work on this section as well. And then we can go into the turn analysis and just look at that a little bit more. So surprisingly, he's breaking after the apex here, but he is off the brakes so soon into that turn, which is pretty incredible. I'm apexing a little bit earlier, so if we go back and look at mine, my apex is here, but then I'm off the brakes, so he's coming into this turn like fully committed, which is really cool to see. And then he doesn't brake for a really long time, and he does does all right here. Uh, his, hitting his brake points pretty good on these berms. There's this little extra one. So let's see what mine was doing. Yeah, so I, I'm, I have an earlier apex. And I'm also braking a little bit later, which probably isn't ideal. We're going through that turn at about the same speed. We're pretty much exiting at the same speed. Um, so it's hard to say actually which strategy is better, but when I see braking on the exit of a turn, it makes me really a bit worried because you don't have a lot of knobs on the ground when you're doing that. When we looked at my ride last time and we were analyzing that, we saw like I was braking here for, like I don't know why, no reason. All right, so that vibration was my phone ringing, and it sounds like my van's done, and it's time for me to go ride the trail. So I hope you enjoyed that quick analysis of why I'm so stinking slow on this trail and what I need to work on to get faster so I can be as fast as the guy that has the KOM. So we'll catch you next time. Thanks.